Hey guys, this is Michael Bleach from Milwaukee. I am just listening to your cold take show. And as you went through Matt Ryan, Tom Brady, and Russell Wilson, it struck me that a lot of the things that's kind of surprised us and brought them to having bad years last year apply to Aaron Rodgers this year. You know, he might have too much control over the offense, going to a new team, he's getting older, maybe he doesn't want to take hits anymore, even if the arm strength is still good. Maybe his mentality with those uh, performative deep balls speaks to something. So I was just curious what you think the risk rating, what's the meter on Aaron Rodgers this year? Thanks, guys. Bye. Uh, what's your answer? I, I had like a six. Uh, um, I, I think it's pretty high. Yeah, seven, I, six, seven is where I, I put a, down on paper. Uh, yeah, I think it is. Uh, I'll say this. Okay, as a difference from like Matt Ryan, there were warning signs with Matt Ryan's arm and everything. That, correct. And I ignored it. <laughs> um, and I shouldn't have. Rogers still has the S tier throws in his body. And it was on film last year, you know, a couple times a game. And I think it was more the, and we talked about this on the QB draft show, was I think it was more just sometimes he just didn't want to take those risks. I think he was just kind of in kind of a little bit of an effort mode, not an effort like effort. I'm going to try this more like effort. I'm over this kind of mode. Um, I think he has a lot more incentive to be more aggressive this year. I think his legs are, you know, getting a little older. I think that's where you see a little bit more of the changes him as a runner. I mean, he's 40 makes sense, but I still think the arm talent is there. I also got to, you got to remember why the risk is there is that, one big point of contention was the what we talked about with the Packers, you know, wanting that pick if Rodgers plays 75% because the Jets are going, what if he retires after this year? That is where the risk is. It's not this year. It's after this year um, is where a lot of the risk is going to come in. It's a high wire act they're doing with a guy that's been a bit flaky. So that's that's scary to want to build a team around. But we talk about windows. They know this is their window and they're going to push it. So. All right. There's a ton of risk. <laughs> oh, yeah. You don't know what you're getting from the guy. He's going to be 40 years old. It, the dynamics within the offense. I mean, we have he's worked with Nathaniel Hackett before, but Matt LaFleur was the play caller for yes, the Packers. Correct. He was in charge of the offense. And I think that there absolutely was an element of, all right, we want you to play this way. Like it took them a while to kind of come to, I think, a middle ground within yeah. their relationship where they got the best versions of one another. And now if you don't have Lafleur there to kind of be that authoritative voice as part of that discussion, I absolutely think that that could be a bad thing for the Jets offense. Yeah. So you have that element. You have just his level of engagement. Mm -hmm. There is a ton of risk here, and there always was when they made this move. But I think we've come back to this a couple different times as part of the conversation. You have to do it. Have to do it. Like it's worth the risk. Yeah. It, it, it can be a eight out of ten on the risk scale and still be the right move. Like yeah. both of those things can be true, and that's yes. kind of how I feel about it. I, I agree. I, I I love your point with Lafleur there, and I you mentioned this several times over the years about how that balance. The first year they're like, I want to do that. Rogers likes to control a lot. When he was with McCarthy, he would make up the hand signals, and the coaches would be like, "What? What was that?" The coaches didn't even know what the hand signals were. And so like, cause he was just go rogue on him and okay, that was McCarthy. And then when LaFleur got there and if anyone's heard LaFleur talk or has known him, he's very direct. Uh, he is very, <laughs> there's not a lot of sugar with how he talks. There's not a lot of sweetness with how he talks. He is very blunt. Um, so I think that's where Hackett was, where his value was. He was the mediator yeah. in between Rogers and LaFleur, but now LaFleur is not there. So it's Hackett. And maybe he learned his lessons with Russ, uh, maybe not leaning into all like the rogue stuff. I also want to say this. Rogers got frustrated with some of those receivers last year. You know, he made sure everyone knew when, you know, he didn't think it was his fault. And hey, hey, that young guy didn't do anything right. He made sure everyone knew that. Uh, Garrett Wilson <laughs> will talk back. And Garrett Wilson has a big personality. And so I'm. I think there's going to be some fireworks in good ways and maybe some uh, some some sideline ways between Garrett Wilson and Aaron Rodgers this year. So I just want to throw that in there as well. But it is risky, but you have to do it. I, I, you really do. This is where the Jets are at this point. This is where Rodgers is at this point in his career. I love Michael just being somebody from Wisconsin trying to talk himself into how much of a risk this is for the Jets. It's so transparent, and I deeply appreciate it.